Yo, what's happening, guys? The boys in the town on the blue side, Tanner Tiger 01. The Bengal Dragon. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter, Tanner Tiger 01. Oh boy. We have to talk. Anthem, we have to talk. These, this is going to be not my review, but my thoughts on Bafo. Uh, I don't, I don't have the time to do a, a three-hour show review anymore. At least, at least not until all this is over. We like, like, you know, at least my course coursework, my PhD, and my exams, or not. But we have to talk. I told you, Bound for Glory needed to be. Better than Slamversary, if not better than at least as good as Slamversary. And a lot of people, a lot of Impact Wrestling fans, paid for this event either through pay per view or through the Fight Network app, or you know, like, or through the Fight app through which they got three months of GWN free. Um, and and expected a 9 out of 10 pay-per-view but instead let me just go through what happened and then, then I'll let you know what then I'll let you know what score I, I I can give I can possibly give it and before you jump to conclusion that oh, it was a horrible show let me just complete let me just finish you don't know what I'm gonna think if it's a horrible show if it's a, or if it if it was actually a even an 8 out of 10 show. You don't know that. Alright. Okay, so we're starting with the X title 6 play match. The match was good, but... Once again, was it Bound for Glory deserving? Was it worthy of a match of Bound for Glory? Especially once when you saw, when you saw the match already happen on the last night... On the on last Thursday episode of Impact. Why are we getting the same match again? And why did Trevor Lee retain? That was a fuck up. Unless Petey Williams is... No, no. Even though if Petey Williams is, is going to get the belt at the end. I would have rather had somebody else win it. And then like, you know, Petey Williams sort of... You know, take it off a of face. Take it off a of face. Let's say a match side L. And then have... And then have another heel like Andrew Everett, Andrew Everett win it like when you move out of Canada, and then take it from there. But why on earth did Trevor Lee retain after P.D. Williams hit the Canadian Destroyer? Um, that was one. That was one uh, negative of the match. Another one was, guys. Okay, wait. First of all, shout out to the Ottawa crowd. Yes, it was sold out from what, I, from what I'm hearing from several people. It was sold out. But, this was not an easy crowd. Impact Wrestling should be very wary of this. This was not an easy crowd. This was a tough crowd. You cannot just get away with, you know, doing whatever. And yes, you are going to get crowds like this. This just means that people hold Impact to a high standard. Hopefully we're gonna get much more in this tapings. If not, then I don't I don't know man. But anyways. Uh the match was good, but this was a regular match. This wasn't even a ladder match. Why was forget the ultimate X. Why wasn't this even a even a ladder match? That's my question. Maybe the Ultimate X uh structure is a bit expensive, but it, but still, a ladder match, a ladder Ladders are not that expensive. What? Why wasn't this? A, we saw ladders out there. Why wasn't, why wasn't this a ladder match? Like it had to distinguish itself from, uh, from the uh, what you call it? It had to distinguish itself from the other matches. Uh, no, from the uh, impact match that we just had. Okay. So. This match, I'll say, my final verdict, it was good, but it was underwhelming. It was not, like, bound for glory material type, like, especially after... Guys, remember all the hype that went into bound for glory? After all that hype, I don't think this, this, this lived up to it. 
Okay, next I believe we get our filler match. Tyson Duke versus Ishimori. Since this was a filler match, a, a last minute match, because there was no advertising given to this, I will give this a pass. I, I will give this a, I will give this a pass. So I, although I expected a bit more, but I'll give this a pass. Ishimori wins. Uh, the first match ever really wins. Okay, the El Patron promo. Whose fucking idea was that was that to come out there on pay-per-view? People are paying for this and, and talk for 10-15 minutes. And yes, the fans were chanting boring. This tells you this is not an easy crowd. Impact Wrestling, if you can please a tough crowd, imagine what you can do with an easy crowd. Just, Im just imagine. Get your act together, Anthem. Okay. Abyss versus Great uh, uh, Monsters Ball match. Okay, once, ag once again, first, where was James Mitchell? Where was James Mitchell? And second, uh, yeah, you had the Rosemary uh, come up, and this might lead to a, a, a Rosemary rejoining Decay. And well, greater loss, so more fa more fat that was trimmed. So I, I'm good with that. Uh, the, guys, this was underwhelming, man. No, this was underwhelming as fuck. Yeah, first of all, kudos to Grado and Abyss for taking those bumps on unbarbed barbed wires. Because, guys, look at how badly Abyss and Grado, especially Abyss, look at how badly his arms got cut up. Like, when, when, he, when he landed on the, on, the, on the boards, and, you know, and, he, and Abyss was sandwiched between the boards. Look how badly Abyss's arms got cut up. But yeah, underwhelming. I ex I expected I expected better from this match. I really really expected better from them. I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing? Where was the deletion type segment? I maybe I understand that you know, shooting sh uh, shooting stuff like this you know beforehand in Canada is not is not that easy because if you like let's say a lot of people know know what uh, the Arthur Arthur the Aberdeen Pavilion looks like and they're gonna catch it right away or whatnot. They could have done something more uh, innovative, like you have like a time machine or something like like both of like have Vanguard one over there and, and both of them like you know fall onto Vanguard one and it teleports them to, uh, 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 it teleports them to a different location where they're fighting. And then teleports them back and then Abyss gets a three count. Man, they could have gone so creative with it man. They could have gone so creative. Look at Sla look at, at how creative they went with it at Slamversary. Right now no. But still, credit where it's due. LVN hit a good uh, 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 kill switch. Rosemary, once again, she's a beast. Took a abyss, hit Rosemary with it with a choke slam on the thing, on the thumbtacks. And you had some, yeah, yeah, you had some decent spot. You had some decent spots. Okay, so up to this point, I'm like, what the fuck is this, man? This is not bomb for glory. Whatever this is, this is not bomb for glory. So next we get to, okay, this is up to this point. Next we get to Team AAA versus Team Impact. Team AAA. Mm, uh, Tahano Jr., Fantasma, uh, 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 El Hio del Fantasma, and, and Pagano versus EC3, uh, Eddie Edwards, and James Storm. Okay. This match, I expected low from this match. I expect, because th this match, like, you know, from what I'm seeing, this match has the one, like, did not have that much build to it. Like, in, in terms of, uh, in terms of segments. Well, this match actually pretty, this match actually delivered. Especially Eddie Edwards, James Storm, uh, Tahano, and guys, I don't know, but 
I'm starting to like Tahano as a Tahano Junior as a as a wrestler. I'm starting to like that guy as a wrestler. He works well. He works well with James Storm. And Phantasma, Pagano, no EC3. He has some good storytelling with James Storm. I'll give him that. But the match was good, guys. Go back and watch this match. There are some there are some nasty spots, especially uh, that Phantasma pile driver on. Yeah, the Phantasma pile driver on Eddie Edwards on the ring apron, where I'm like, oh my god, Eddie's go, like like it, it, I'm like, guys, I thought Eddie was gonna die. I guys, I, because guys, look at the way Eddie's head was dangling between uh, you know between Phantasma's knees. Look at that. Look at the way it was dangling. I'm like, man, if if just a little bit of a mistake is made, Eddie Edwards is gonna absolutely die. Oh my god, you know what? But sick, sick spot. So this match, it I will say it exceeded my expectations. I don't have I did not have good expectations to begin with, but this match was good. I enjoyed this match. The wrestling was good. And uh, a good amount of people hit their strides. And and EC3, like, also I like EC3 when he, when he went and said, Kick! No, verbatim. Kick his fucking head off. They did not, they did not censor that word, by the way. Okay. So. Three matches in. I'm like, what the fuck is this show? Then we have one good match. Okay, OVE versus LAX 5150 Street Fight. Towards the beginning, they showed someone backstage uh, with that thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, that uh, the, that he took out someone and draped him in the Mexican in the Mexican flag. We are said to believe this is homicide. Okay, okay. This match, OVE retained, but this match. Okay, this is high spot after high spot after high spot. Perhaps OVE and LAX figured out, listen, people are like, especially... Guys, for me, the low point of the show was Al Al Alberto El Patron's promo. Holy crap, that went on for so fucking long! To be honest, if Alberto El Patron had not hit that promo, and just came out in the end and fucked shit up. It would have made a lot more sense. It would have had a lot, a much more impact. And then cut this promo, cut this promo on the impact tapings. Okay. This match, high spot after high spot after high spot. But man, those are some high spots. Like uh, I think uh, Ortiz is running power bomb through a table off the stage. Um, uh, Santana's dive. Yeah, uh, yeah, people saying we can't see shit. I'm like, God, motherfuckers, just, just point your head upwards. You gonna see some, you gonna see some dude about to dive off like tw a 20 foot scaffolding, you know, you know, through some poor motherfucker on a table. That was awesome. Uh, I believe Jay Christ or one, or one of the OVE members, uh, man, the way, I believe he threw a chair onto Ortiz. The way he threw that chair onto Ortiz, man, the chair got, the chair got wrapped around his neck after, after the guy got up the ladder and basically threw the chair at, at Ortiz. The chair hit him so hard, his head went through the, through the hole in the chair and got stuck. Oh, man. Man, that was good. Okay, um, then I believe Jay Chris hit a superplex, you know, while, while setting up like four, two or four chairs, and Jay and uh, Jay Chris overshot it, and Jay Chris went through the chairs. Then LAX street sweeper on the stack of chairs. That was real. That was really good as well. You know, you got you got this awesome chance. Yes, I will give it this. You know, at this point, the match was actually very good. Okay, the fans know so at this point, but me, I, I'm like, I'm like, whatever. 
I'm like, whatever. Like, you know what? Like, I don't mind the way that I don't mind the way the way they did this. Sammy Callahan came up, uh, uh, came out, uh, threw one member uh, onto a ladder. Hopefully, the ladder should have broken. That would have had a bit more emphasis. And Spike Pile Grove, another guy, threw threw a table on the outside from the apron. And OVE retained. And and Sammy Collins says, we are OVE, thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm like, okay. We'll, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see where this goes. Yeah, the fans know Solon because a lot of the fans did not know who he is. Uh, to which I'm a little disappointed because... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sammy Callahan is a uh, is one of those indie stars. I expected this crowd to be a bit more knowledgeable about the about uh, the indie stars in the indie wrestling. But anyways, the match itself was good. I'll yes, the match was good. Okay, and just to get this out of the way, uh, you had uh, a few more uh, surprise uh, appearances. I believe you had Santino, Santino Morella, uh, shown in the crowd. You had uh, uh, Jimmy Jacobs coming coming out wearing makeup and shit, oh, weird ass. Uh, and you had Sammy Callahan. And from what I hear from the impact tapings, uh, like like from the impact tapings, you're gonna have more people in. In fact, they might have found they might have found out who's gonna take the belt of belt of somebody else. Okay, okay. So from LA, at least from LX's perspective, this match exceeded my expectations. Guys, LAX can fucking go. Okay, ne- next we move to the knockout title match. Okay. Uh, Gail Kim versus Sienna versus Ali. First of all, I'm done with... Look, look, I don't like Bailey in WWE, so naturally I won't like Ali that much, but at least Ali can go much more in the ring. But nah, you know what? I'm getting tired of this uh, this, uh, this, uh, this happy-go-lucky character. I'm getting tired. You know, bring Cherry Bomb back. Bring Cherry Bomb. Cherry Bomb was not this happy-go-lucky character. And by the way, by the way, first of all, Kudos to Impact Wrestling for not bringing out Braxton Sutter. I'll, I'll, I'll have to point that out. The match. This was Sienna's, arguably Sienna's best showing. And look, this, like, I had this, I had this feeling about Sienna. Sienna can work stiff. With people who are who agree to work stiff with her, because like look in women's wrestling, you should you should realize not every woman likes to not every woman likes to work stiff. Not every woman likes to take hard bumps. So, with women's wrestling, if you can if you can take hard bumps. Then Sienna can Sienna can you know can have a good showing. Even the pounce here Sienna hit it actually looked pretty good. But in the end, Gail Kim hashtag goat at least in North American women's wrestling hit the eat the feet of the second rope of the second rope and. Your new knockouts champion, Gail Kim. And if I'm not mistaken, this was the first Canadian to win a title in Canada. At least, if I'm not mistaken, from a perspective of an American wrestling company hosting a, a live pay-per-view in Canada. Like, or at least a major American wrestling company. Which is, if it's true, if it's true, then it's surprising because the... How many how many times has the WWE been, been in Canada and they never did it? So you know what? Kudos to Impact Wrestling. Like f- from that uh Triple A versus uh thing match. From from that Triple A versus uh Team Impact match, 
I started getting into the show, and then like OVE versus LAX, like my interest peak. I'm like, like not peak, my interest. Like it really woke me up. Like whoa, okay. The gear, the, the knockouts match. Yeah, you damn right. It was good. It was good. Okay, and congratulations to Gail Kim. Congratulations. Congratulations to Gail Kim. Guys, say whatever you want about Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling is treating Gail Kim like with the utmost respect that she deserves. She deserves all this respect. Listen. Listen, this women's revolution bullshit you see in WWE. Nah, that woman holding the knockout title right there. That one who just won the knockout title last night. She is the women's revolution pioneer. The women's revolution you see today in wrestling. She is the pioneer. She started in Impact Wrestling. Way before Paige, way before Emma, way before Charlotte, it was Gil Kim and Awesome Kong holding it down. So even though Rosemary was not in it, this match exceeded my expectations. I thought Gail Kim was not going to work, you know, uh, was not going to have that much of a perform performance because of her back issues. Nope. Nope. Was well, good. Okay. Now. American Top Team versus Muth and Stefan Bonner in a six side of steel match. First of all, I would like to point out something. Moose, once again, the only person to get a special entrance, a, a modified entrance. I believe that was his brother. Uh, I believe that was his, his brother. His brother came out, if I'm not mistaken, freestyling to the Moose theme. That was pretty good. I, li I like that touch. That was pretty good. Okay. Um... The match itself, first of all, the storytelling was very good. The storytelling was very good. Like, you know, they're teasing, teasing, teasing the MMA guys, you know, going, you know, Stephen Bonner and King Mo go, going at it, you know, at, you know, at it, you know, going at each other. But all is Lashley takes out Stephen Bonner, Moose takes out King Mo, and Lashley and Moose end up like, you know, like, you know, locking horn, you know, locking horns. Holy shit, man. Guys. Lashley and Moose are legit, are legit big men who are fucking stiff workers. Man, did you see that Lashley clothesline? The, the force with which he hit that clothesline and turned Moose the fuck inside out. Did you see that? Then, you know, Moose's dropkick, I believe Moose had a, like a... Moose in a top rope GTH on one of the MMA guys. And by the way, uh, shout out to Colby Covington. Uh, he he got the GSP chant going. And by the way, by the way, shout out to GS, GSB, uh, GSP. In the third round, the way he the way he fucked up Michael Bisping. The way he fucked up Michael Bisping, like when he just just went through his defenses, went through his defenses, went through his defenses, and as Michael Bisping was his, you know, slow, slow ass was ducking in, duck right into a punch, and that's it, that's it. GSP, your new champion. Okay, just to digress a little bit. Uh, I saw the GSP Michael Bisping fight and I saw the Cody Garbrandt uh, T TJ uh, Dillashaw fight. Somewhere at the back of my mind, I thought Dillashaw was going to win. I didn't think it would take him this long to get revved up though because in the first round, he looked a bit slow. In the first round, Dillashaw looked a bit like, you know, he, he's not that much into it. And then he, for some reason, towards the end, end of the first round, and after, after that, he sort of woke the fuck up and then 
knock Cody Gar- knock, knock Cody Garbrandt the fuck out. Okay, but back to this. Guys, look, I called this before that once they put the six sides of steel in, Moose is going off top of the cage. And Moose went off the top of the cage. And I like how they set it up though. I'm like, wait a minute. How could Moose not climb the cage? Like, Moose not climb the cage. I'm like, okay, he okay, like you know, he's he's fighting with people outside the cage. And then Dan Lambert. Uh, like you know, walks in with the MMA guys, walks, uh, comes in and locks the cage. Oh, there you go. Moose gonna climb, you know, you know, climb this bitch from the outside. And guys, guys, notice how high Moose was. And th- this is a big, big fucking dude. Notice how high Moose was. And notice how small the cage looked under him. How thin. Guys, it's like a 300 pound gorilla, okay, with a unicycle on a tightrope. Okay, the gorilla looks really big compared to the tightrope. No, no offense, man, but I'm just saying it looked like a very large animal. You can even say an, you could even say an elephant resting on your window pane or something like that. Man, I thought that cage was gonna break. I thought that cage. I thought that cage was gonna give if he stood on top of the cage for way too long. I thought that. I thought that cage was gonna give, but yes, moose, moose, guys, six six three hundred pound moose jumped off the top of the cage. <laughs> but in the end, uh, the MMA guys ended up winning, and I thought that was a very realistic ending. So this match, this match. Definitely, and I don't. I, I, somehow I feel this is not the end of the feud. Somehow I feel this feud will end at the end of this, at the end of the, uh, of the set of impact tapings. Somehow I feel this is not the end of the feud. But this was a good, good match. It definitely, def, definitely exceeded expectations. And also, also, guys, they put. Over the cage, King Mo was bleeding. That's what a cage is supposed to, steel is supposed to do to you. At least someone should be, someone should bleed. So kudos to, kudos to Impact Wrestling for this man. One notification. You 2:39 p.m. So I'm just, I just, like I just have to be a bit wary of time. So this, based on this, guys, look at this match. Look at this map because with this pay per view, you a lot of us came out thinking that Impact Wrestling did Bound for Glory to you know to build for the Impact tapings to build for the fall following shows. Look at this match. This is how you build for the following tapings. The match was very good pay per view quality, and it left you wondering, and it left you wondering what's going to happen next. Okay. So we get to our main event, Eli Drake versus Johnny Impact. With over 20 minutes left of the time limit. Okay. Okay, first of all, do, do, don't lie to me if you say that you did not see this ending coming. Don't lie to me. This, this ending has been rumored for a very long time that El Patron is going to screw up the main event and become heel. Prior to that, prior to that, the match was, let's say that ending happened after Eli Drake, oh, Eli Drake retained by the way, let's see, let's say that ending happened after Eli Drake retained, this would have been main event of the year, the, 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 this perhaps would have been match of the, this would have been match of the year candidate. I'm not kidding. This would have been match of the year candidate. But the so pro, prior to maybe, maybe the last one or two minutes, the match. No, some people say it was decent. And by the way, fuck you, four three four. Um, the match was actually very, very good, guys. 
Look at Eli Drake and look at the intent and the and the authority with which he hits his moves. This is something underrated underrated in, in, in pro wrestling. And Eli Drake for a main eventer, guys, when he hit that springboard moonsault, and people are talking about, uh, we need a guy who is charismatic and who has athleticism. Isn't that Eli Drake? Are you not talking about Eli Drake? A guy who, who's, who's very good in the mic, who's very good in the ring. at the Both at the same time. Isn't that Eli Drake? In mainstream American wrestling. If you go to Ring of Honor, you might even say, isn't, isn't that Jay Le- wasn't that Jay Lethal? But in, main, main event, in mainstream American wrestling, isn't that Eli Drake? The guy who all of you have been waiting for. Just because he's not in the WWE, he doesn't matter? So fuck you. The ma- Like I said, the mad... Look, Johnny Impact in the ring is a mother, motherfucking beast. On the mic, he's a motherfucking pussy. That that's the problem. That's the problem with Johnny Impact. He is very, very corny on the mic. In the ring, he is an absolute beast. No one can take that away from him. Guys, go look at this match. Go look at the moves they hit. You will know exactly what I'm talking about. So yes, apart from the ending, the match, it was very good. By the way, I had high expectations of this match, so it lived up to my expectations. It definitely did. And with Alberto El Patron, let's say, look, I was rooting for Eli Drake to win. Had El Patron draped Johnny Impact over Eli Drake, I would have said this match was, you know, was disappointing with the finish. But he put, he pinned Eli Drake over Johnny Impact. So I will say this match is pretty good. Like, the guy who I wanted to see win won. And hopefully, this turns Eli Drake face. If this turns Eli Drake's face, that that's a good thing. I and I don't want that belt to be around Alberto El Patron. I want Albert, Eli Drake and Alberto uh, El Patron having a match with Eli Drake as the face and Alberto as the heel, and Johnny Impact comes up and beats up El Patron, and then because you know Impact saying that like you know this man a lot to me and my family and you took this away from me so so we so we gonna feud about it then Alberto El Patron and Johnny Impact go into a program so at least until Eli Drake beats Bobby Roode's record, record I don't want El Patron to, to take this belt off Eli Drake once that happens maybe next Bound for Glory Moose takes or maybe next anniversary even Moose takes the belt off Alberto El Patron so my overall show rating, I cannot go more than 6.75 out of 10. That that huge impact moment was missing from this pay-per-view. Was it worth the money? If if you bought it through Fight TV, 40 bucks. Yes, it was worth the 40 bucks. If you bought it through Direct TV, well, you paid 50 bucks, is what I heard. Uh, some people pay 50 bucks through DirecTV. No! But then, I, and if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the 40 bucks through, 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 uh, through Fight TV is in high definition. So technically, they were actually charging 40 bucks. Okay. The other money is for, is for the... the is for the other, uh, uh, you know, cable and pay-per-view uh, provider own personal charges, I guess. But yeah, six point seven five out of ten. The my final verdict on this Bound for Glory, it is it was good, but it was underwhelming. 
it was not as good as Slammiversary. And it needed to be at least as, as good as Slammiversary. This needed to be the pay-per-view that shot everyone up. This needed to be that pay-per-view. And it failed in that. It was a, to be objective with you. This was a good pay-per-view. Don't get me wrong. But it was underwhelming. It did not le live up to the expectations of a bomb for glory. 6.75 out of 10. It needed to be at least an 8.5 or 9 out of 10. Alright, I'm, I'm looking forward to comments and suggestions. Uh, let me know what you got. What you guys thought about the pay-per-view in the comment section below. This is the MC Time on the side, the Bengal Dragon. Uh, signing out. And make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, follow me on Twitter at TanTalk01 and hit that uh, bell notifications button.